My name is Michael Daryabegi, and I am presenting a CIVI CRM introduction. I'm going to review some basic CIVI CRM concepts, um, talk to you about um, how you can start out using CIVI CRM, where you can go for help, how to learn about it, um, understand a little bit about the community. So, what is CIVI CRM? Um, if you want to play around with it, you can go to demo.cvcrm.org. Uh, but CRM uh, stands for different things. Uh, I kind of like the word constituent relations management, uh, but sometimes we can keep it simple and say contact relations. Um, but it's all about people interacting with each other and you um, maximizing your view into what your organization is doing and uh, and leveraging those relationships and activities. Um, so City CRM is a database, but more importantly, it's an open source project. And what does that mean? Um, it means that it is code and there's a bunch of developers working on it. Um, many of the developers our users, uh, sounds like a, a lot of you in here are uh, potentially future developers and contributors to the code base. Um, but more than just code, it's, it's um, events such as this and conferences and user groups and code sprints and documentation sprints, uh, people who uh, other online resources such as the discussion forums and the chat rooms where you can find uh, lots of people volunteering their time to help each other out, share their experiences, answer questions, etc. Um, okay, so in addition to under, you know, for your successfully using the system, you need to know the terminology, but it's also great within your organization to have this common language to refer to things. Some, some of the things that um, are some, some good terminology to know. Contact, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. But uh, contact can include uh, various types of contacts, such as organizations, um, individuals, households, um, and you can, of course, create uh, your, own, your own types of contacts. So, that you can see. Uh, so here we have students, parents, staff, teams, sponsors. So you can create contacts for um, all the different types of people that you want to track in your organization. A uh, very important concept is activities. Um, so that could be things like meetings. It could be like volunteering. Um, Let's see if I can show you some of the default activities that come in here. So things like emailings, uh, changes to their accounts, making donations, attending events, registering for events, uh, all sorts of things activities are used for. Um, contributions and uh, financial transactions. I think those are pretty self-explanatory. Um, memberships. Um, a lot of associations use City CRM, and so if they have memberships. Uh, you might use it for um, if you have special benefits or other ways that you want to engage your constituents. Um, and if I end up using any jargon, just stop me and I will uh, be sure to explain it. Okay, so let's review some of the, um, the resources you have. So obviously there is, um, oh, so there is a great book that is available for free online. Uh, and you can just easily remember it's book.civicrm.org. Uh, When you visit there, you'll see that there's the user and administrator guide, as well as uh, develop 
developer resources. So if you're just a user, you want to look for the, the admin guide. You can look at it online. You can download it. And it goes through um, a lot of great, fully fleshed out scenarios um, of how you might use Civi CRM. Uh, when you're in the app itself, um, you can look out for these little question marks. And if you're confused about a label for something, you're not sure what it's for, click on those little question marks and uh, there's usually a very helpful tip right there. Uh, please come to CityCon. It's a very exciting event. Um, always lots of great people, um, good sessions, which you can review on the site right now. Um, SF2014.CityCRM.org. Check it out. Tell your friends and tell them to learn about CityCRM. You can learn about the development roadmap, uh, exciting new features, uh, exciting events coming up. How other people are using Civi CRM. Uh, before the conference, uh, you might be interested in more of um, the topic that we're covering today. Just uh, generally discovering about Civi CRM, getting uh, uh, the basic introduction. Uh, somebody's got some background noise that they wouldn't mind muting. That'd be great. Um, CivyTeacher.org is a great collection of videos, of screencasts, um, little how-tos. If you're visual, uh, we'll be doing some of that today. We'll be showing you a live instance and not just slides. Um, but go to CivyTeacher.org and check out some of the videos there. Uh, Forum.CivyCM.org is a very important place that you should get to know. Go and explore there. Uh, all different topics. Uh, usually uh, people post their complex questions. They run into trouble or are just wondering how to do things. Uh, it's always good. Before you go, um, other places go see if your question has already been answered. And of course, uh, not just posting questions, but once you gain some experience with City CRM, uh, you can give back to the community by going and answering people's questions. And of course, teaching is a very good way to learn as well. Uh, after you check the forums, uh, then feel free to get on IRC. And uh, there's always uh, several people there. Uh, people all over the world, so almost any time of day you can find somebody there usually. Uh, I, you might want to um, read up on some IRC etiquette, um, you know, try to be concise. Uh, use pastebin to share samples of what you're talking about. Um, and of course be respectful and patient because, um, you know, People might be hanging out in the in the chat room, and they'll see your question eventually. But also, doesn't hurt to ask after a little bit. Um, CivyCRM.org, of course, you can go to, and there's lots of uh, resources there. A uh, little fun feature is at the top. You'll see a banner of um, the user profiles or people that have created their profiles on the site. Learn a little bit about the community that way. Um, some of the resources on CVCM.org is uh, there's the ambassadors program, so you can browse there and find people willing to share their experiences and help you out. Uh, joining a meetup is a great way to uh, to find mentors and, and get help and share with others. Uh, you can find them on Civi upcoming events. Which, uh, you can also find a link in the footer of CiviCRM.org. We have a meetup here in DC. If there's not one in your area, it would be great to start one. And uh, you know, it doesn't take too much effort. Uh, we do ours in DC only about uh, every month and a half. And uh, people we generally find it very helpful. 
if you are looking to jump right in and do a full-fledged implementation, uh, there is the providers list on cvcm.org. You can search by location or the types of services provided. Uh, of course, uh, here's my own company up there. Um, and that's good if you, especially if you have customizations, but also you can find people who will just help you through the process of assessing your organization's need and, and can guide you through how to use Civic Serum. Because uh, even though it is uh, a nice interface to use, there's a lot of concepts to understand and often lot different ways of doing things and it's not always obvious what the, the pros and cons of the different approaches are. So it's good to get somebody with experience. Um, okay. So again, talking about it, I think I ran through some of these things, contacts, contributions, activities, events, memberships, and mailings. Um, any questions about that? No? Good. All right, then um, I'll get right into a little walkthrough of events. So first off, uh, here's your um, uh, what you see when you first log into CityCRM. And uh, you can configure this dashboard. So since we're talking about events today, I threw up this uh, events income summary. Um, and you might want to know what your donations are. Uh, we mentioned activities. You can have a quick snapshot of uh, what's been going on in your system. Uh, so, city events. You can see here um, some general settings that you want to look at before you start using events. Um, so let's go to event types. And you can see out of the box you get conferences, exhibitions, fundraisers, meetings, performances, and workshops. Um, and it's not too much here that you need to configure. Uh, it's really just a way to categorize your events. Another thing you probably want to configure is the, the oh sorry, I meant to do participant types um, or participant roles. Uh, so you probably don't need this until you get into advanced usage, but so you know it's there, you can say when a contact registers for an event, what type of role they are registering for. And then we'll go back to the statuses. You can see that you can uh, have very sophisticated categorizations of people's statuses. Um, registered, attended, no show, canceled, pending, etc. Of course, you can create new ones. Uh, okay, so let's get into managing events. Um, actually, let's start off with um, set up a simple example here, and then we'll get into all the different options. So uh, this is an example not logged into the system, so more like what the um, public will see. And so every event has an event information page, and um, since it's a public page, it will pick up the styling and theme of whatever CMS you're using uh, and will integrate into your site. And you can have some information about the event, um, whatever we, you want to put here, um, the basic where and when. And one option is to have these share links. So you can have uh, regist regist registrants help spread the word 
share on social media. So, so if we click register, you can provide some more information and instructions about registering. Um, you can register one person or many people, which is often important for organizations. Uh, and you'll see later that you can have different levels of registrants and, and different fee amount. This is a very expensive uh, event, obviously. Um, uh, and you can take uh, payments. And we'll show you later that City Serum integrates with uh, several different payment processors. And if there's uh, even if there isn't a payment processor readily available, if you really like your payment processor, you can um, create a new payment processor with a little help of uh, coding. And after we register and pay, we have a confirmation. And there we go. And again, we uh, get people to promote the event. And some emails were generated in this process um, where somebody can print this confirmation as well. Okay, so any questions before we look at the, the configuration and some of the other options? Okay, great. Let me check the chat window here. Okay, good. All right, so um, Let's add in. So again, we went to events and manage, manage events. Actually, before I get into that, why don't we do um, registering folks on the back end? Um, so not only can you have a public online registration, but if, uh, let's say, your site's not integrated with your CMS, or you're doing perhaps a, a quick and dirty event, like you're, you're organizing a volunteering event, and you just want to capture people's information who came to the event, um, you can, of course, enter and contact through the back end. Um, so here, if there's people already in your database, you can select them, or you can create a contact on the fly, um, select the event that you're registering them for, and specify the role like I showed you before that you can configure the different roles. Um, status, if you want to come back and mark somebody as a no-show or say yes, they were actually there. There's discounts, et cetera, et cetera. So let's see, say they paid by cash, completed, marking note. Um, and I'm going to, so we have a little bit more data here. And one more participant. I'll show you they're creating a new one this time. OK, 
Okay, so that created the contact. Now we need to finish the registration. Again, select the event, attendee, attended. Then the paid in cash. And, uh, and I don't know if we noticed the confirmation here. Um, so we can put in an email message here. Um, okay. And then you can see here that um, this is displaying the, the contact record. And so when you have a contact, you can always go to the events tab and see all of the events that they've attended. Um, the reason there's two buttons here is one for a basic form. If you want to process, uh, I'm not too surprised that's not working because of the development copy. But um, if you could, you can process a credit card right through here as well. I think this one will work. Yeah. Okay, so now we have an event with some participants. Um, let's go to manage events. So here, there's not that many events, so it's it's pretty easy. But after some time. Um, you have a bunch of events, so you can sort your events. And there's our event. Uh, so you can either do search or search filter by the type. Again. You can add more options here for categorizing your event. Um, you can search for uh, past events within, within a range or just say events that haven't happened yet or are ongoing. Um, just real quick, in this interface, you can get to the page that we looked at, which is the event info. Uh, when you're setting things up, you might want to use the test drive uh, version of the registration form. Um, here's a link back to the form we were just using to register participants on the back end. Um, so here we can find participants. So you can see we've got the Bachman Jameson family and the Jones brothers. And you can select different actions here. So if we uh, so we want to do something with all of the attendees. Um, one thing you might want to do is send an email to them, uh, send them a reminder, changes and things, whatever you want to communicate to them. Any questions about these actions? Of course, you can do bulk things. Let's say, oh yeah. What were we thinking? The event hasn't happened yet. It shouldn't be marked attended. So let's change them all to registered. OK. So let's go in and look at some of the configuration options. So here's the basic information. Um, so again, the event type uh, before I tried to look for a conference. So this is much of the performance. Um, have the specify what role people will get assigned when they um, register. Um, there's an option to have a participant listing. If, uh, say, you know, you're having a membership event, so you want the 
the attendees to be able to interact with each other and you can generate a, a directory. If you're doing a public event, you might want to disable this. Um, and of course the title, the basic summary that will be used on the back end. And this is where you can create the event info page that we were first looking at. Uh, you can see you've got your usual, what you see is what you get editor options here. Um, if you're if somebody mocks something up in another document, um, paste from Word is a, a nice utility that will keep you from having all kinds of garbage displayed on your website if you're not using plain text. Um, uh, I guess we don't need to go too much on how to use the WYSIWYG. If you're familiar with any uh, CMSs, this should look pretty intuitive. Uh, you can insert images. You can create links. Uh, you can use tables. And of course, format your text. Um, I guess maybe I'll show you the images real quick. Pretty easy interface. You can upload new images. Um, You can browse on the server itself, get little previews, double click on it, resize it, and there you go. So you can see very intuitive. Uh, of course, your event has a start and an end date. Uh, this is actually not required. You might have an open ended date. Um, so you can clear this out. Um, you can set the total number of participants if you've got uh, limited seating. Uh, and here's a message say, sorry, we're out of space. Uh, you can put a map up on the information page. Uh, this says whether or not it's public. Uh, this displays that widget that I showed you before. I mean, um, So again, the spread the word widget, um, and whether it's active or not. If you want to disable it while you're working on it, um, and so this is the the general settings we're on the info and settings tab. Uh, if you want to use a, a map, of course, as a, a location, you can. Use an existing location. You can create a new location. Um, you go. Uh, and this has the geocoding location. I think we turned on the map here. See if we can get a map to show up. Nope, still no map. Sorry. <laughs> Trust me, you can do it. Okay. Um, that's the location. Of course, fees are very important. Of course, you can do free events like uh, volunteering or just a, something that's open. Um, of course, you can configure Civi to use different currencies. Um, here again is your payment processor. So you have multiple payment processors installed. This I don't have a real one installed, but um, Authorized.NET, PayPal are two most common payment processors. You have them both and choose which one per event, which one will be used. Uh, you can allow people to pay later. Um, and for financial types, you 
information. Uh, we didn't go into contributions, but all of your uh, donations, event registrations, you can categorize those. Um, you can now um, configure City Serum to export your financial data into something like QuickBooks or another system. And so you want to be able to track all your transactions. And so you can say in the events, what kind of transaction is this? Uh, price sets are a, um, a little more advanced, but there's um, a lot more functionality you can have using price sets. If you are consistently having people register um, with the same prices, say like you always have your different tiers of $25, $50, $100, uh, you might want to set up a price set so you're not entering in um, all these fees here every time, as well as uh, there's lots of other options for price sets such as they can be triggered, or they can be made available at different times, um, things like that. Um, but for a basic usage, you can just um, enter in different options here. You may have students, um, seniors, anything like that. Uh, you can also do discounts for like a, an early bird registration. Uh, you can also do uh, more advanced things with uh, an extension called City Discounts, uh, but we won't go into that right now. Um, so here this just has the discount start and end date, and below here you can see so when the discount set is in effect, then instead of using the fees that we defined up here, we will instead use these fees. A nice discount there. And you don't just have to have one, you can add as many discount sets as you want just um, by adding more. Okay, save. We want to keep going, so I'm not clicking save and done. This will just return me to the same place. We can go to the next tab. So this is for if we want to have a page like we viewed. Um, so if you don't have online registrations enabled, then you'll just have an event info page without the register now button. Um, but you do want to allow people to register online, so you have to fill out this form. Um, when you first come into it, you'll just see this. It's not enabled. Uh, we can change that um, change that link text. Uh, you can set dates for when the registration form will be active. You can allow for the option of um, registering multiple participants or doing it one at a time. Um, oh, and you can let people do pending registration and if uh, people are starting registrations and not finishing them, they can time out and not clutter up your system. Um, so again, the registration screen which we saw, again, you're saying with the rig editor, you can pull whatever you want. There's the intro, footer text. Uh, so profiles is some city jargon that um, we should note. The profile is the set of fields in your database. Uh, it can be the built-in fields, custom fields. Um, so common one to use, of course, is the registration info. Uh, you can use your registration form to um, create new individuals, addresses, uh, as well as any um, um, custom profile that you create. Uh, and you can include multiple profiles. Uh, you can't just, there's a couple different uh, areas that you can insert them into, the top and the bottom, et cetera. Uh, for additional participants, again, if you're 
registering multiple participants. Uh, and then once they, um, we saw before the confirmation screen, so this is where they'll be prompted to review their registration information. Um, and then once they confirm and their credit card is processed, you can put in the thank you screen. Um, then you probably want to make sure they have the information in their email. So this, of course, is optional, so you don't have to send an email, but most people do. Uh, you can put in whatever text. Um, and I'll just quickly say, since we want to have some time for Q and A, um, you can schedule reminders. Uh, you can configure the telefriend option. Customize that text. Okay, so um, are there any questions? I hope so. Anybody on chat? Oh, sorry. Okay, I see there's a question about profiles. Okay, I will first answer the question about profiles. Um, okay, so profiles are used for multiple purposes. Um, I think let's go look at the registration screen. Uh, so a profile, when you hear profile, you can think form, um, but it's a collection of fields. Um, so here's our registration page right now with no profiles added. Um, go back to the online registration. So let's include an additional profile. Okay, so we're included at the bottom of the page, the name and address profile. Here's our registration info right now. We're only collecting first name, last name, and email. And then we have the, the billing info. So now I should be able to refresh this. And Now, since I put it at the bottom, we just scroll past the billing info, and now we have this new profile or this new form added in here to collect the additional information. Uh, so this is pretty basic information, but like I said, you can add uh, your own profile. So if you have some custom data, if you want to say collect somebody's uh, Twitter handle or know what their meal preferences are, uh, any number of things. Um, we can right from here add a profile. Uh, actually, it's saying um, oh, this is added. No, let's go back here. Okay, so if we want to add a profile. We go to administer. Uh, custom data and screens and profiles. That's how we got here. And then we can add a profile. So my conference info, more info about conference attendees. Um, there's a just a wait here. Again, here's the question marks that I talked to you about. So if you're like, what does this use for mean? There's a more detailed description of all those options. I won't go into everything that profiles are used for, um, but for events, you, can, you want to use the standalone forms and directories. Like I mentioned, there's uh, you can generate directory for your event as well. Um, and again, please. Tell us what your meal preferences are. Uh, save that. 
And then now it takes you directly to adding the fields to the form, to the profile. So we want to do individuals, um, let's just say gender, is it required or not? Um, if you have uh, custom data, maybe you just want to show them, you can make it a view only field. Um, I want to make this available in public pages. Searchable. Um, and is it displayed in the results? And then here's the, so we put in before the, the help text for the, the profile itself. Here's on the form. Okay, and then we can do this as many times as we want, add a bunch of fields. And then we're, when we're done, just hit save. So now we've created a new profile form with two fields in it. So our profile should show up now in here. Um, so there's my conference info. And we'll save the event. Um, and now if we view the registration form. Oops, where is it? Oh, I put it under additional participants of the problem. And here we go, here's our additional form. Any other questions? Okay, great. Uh, let's see, swap out the credit card selection with... Uh, for some reason it's not showing me the rest of the question, so I'm not sure what um, you're wanting to swap the credit card section out with, um, oh, there we go, with PayPal. Yeah, the, uh, that's dependent upon um, the, the payment processor that I selected for the event. So yeah, this is, this is dependent upon the payment processor you have selected. Uh, so it sounds like there's um, no other questions. So uh, thank you very much for attending. Again, uh, Michael Dari Uh I believe these, this recording will be made available somewhere. I'm not sure where, but I'm sure we'll email you. And I um, hope you uh, caught the resources that we shared. And uh, we'll go look for more help there. And um, Thank you very much. Hope you have a good day.